Hey guys, happy freebie Friday on a Monday. <laughs> um, so we're going to be flying by the seat of our pants right now <laughs> because I just barely finished up the um, projects that we are going to be doing for the week. So we are revisiting the cutest Halloween. We're also um, using some of the dyes from the Frightfully Cute bundle. And we are using dyes, uh, the seasonal labels dyes. So that is what we're featuring. The um, cutest Halloween bundle comes with the punch. I'm going to show you real quick how um, great the punch is because the punch actually coordinates back to the designer series paper, which I know we talked about before. I'm just going to show you real quick. We've got the paper here. And if I want to punch out here, I'm going to have to cut it. What did I do with my scissors? Ugh, sorry, that was an extreme close-up. Oh, you guys, it's been one of those days. One of those days. So out of the designer series paper, I just cut out one of the pumpkins. And now I'm just going to slide it into the punch. Well, maybe. Okay, I'm going to need a sticky for this. Trick. The trick is to grab. Uh, I've got a sticky piece I've been using over and over. Use a sticky end to attach before you feed it. And use hold on to the sticky note. See how I'm lighting that up? Well, I'm going to have to look, you guys. I have to look at it. And then you just punch. Hang on, I've got little pieces everywhere. And that gets you, punches it right out. So that's how we're using the punch for the um, the cutest Halloween real quick though. I do want to mention that the, um, the holiday penguins class is going to be coming up at the end of the month for registration. Uh, if you're interested, make sure you send me a message, uh, text me, send me a PM, something. Let me know that you want in. These are the projects. So stink. I love this one. This one I think is my favorite. <laughs> this one, the pillow box is insane. This one, I made a box for a box of snow caps. You know, like the snow caps you get when you go to the movie theater. Um, snow caps are in there. I've got a holiday card. And then this set actually includes a happy birthday sentiment. So I included that. Uh, one of those as well. What a versatile set, right? I thought I'd just throw that in. Make the class complete. So be sure that you reach out to me. I have a couple of different payment options depending on how much of the kit you're wanting and if you're a member of my team. So if you're a member of my team, one of the perks is you get... Um, you get the make and take kits for all for my classes for $20. So it basically just covers uh, shipping, shipping and the make and take kits. So super duper simple. Um, and it includes the PDF. So the PDF by itself is $15 and then the shipping is $5. So it's basically free for make and take kits. So a little perk to be on my team. Anyway, um, so getting to the fun stuff, I'm going to turn you guys around and we're going to get going on this week's projects. I can tell you this little treat box is, it holds one of the sanitizers from Bed Bath & Beyond, but it's just the cutest treat box. We're actually going to start with that. Um, I also have this super cute tombstone box and remember if you place an order of $35 or more in my online store between now and October 18th at 11:59 p.m. 
uh, you'll get all of the make and take kits for free. And then my caramel apple holder. This is so cute. I love it. So we're going to have a lot of fun. All right. I'm going to turn you around. We're going to get started. Hang tight, you guys. Hang tight. Let me make sure I got it lined up. So you can see the hostess code. Yes, you can. Wonderful. Okay. So let's start with the sanitizer box. You need a piece of black cardstock that is five and a half by five and a half. Let me grab my trimmer. So the trimmer, you're gonna be getting rid of the dark blade. We're gonna be using the scoring blade, which is the light one. And we're gonna be scoring it a half inch. I always start with the smaller, the smaller scores on this side of the track, simply because um, I can hold the paper down uh, because I've got the whole rest of the trimmer, right? So I start there, but then I'm gonna flip it to carry on with the remainder. So one and a half inch and four and a half inches. Line it up. And then we're gonna turn it and we're gonna do half an inch again. Let me make sure I got it half. Flip it again. And then we're gonna do two inches. We're gonna do three inches. And we're gonna do four and a half inches. All right. Set that aside. We want to burnish. Let me grab my bone folder. We want to burnish all of our score lines. Make sure the creases are really well done. Anytime you're making a box, you want to be sure that the creases are well done. Then we're going to take our snips. And on the side that has the half inch line, we actually have two of them, pardon me. So on this first one, we're gonna get rid of these two rectangles and we're gonna notch the corner. This is gonna be the tab that secures the box together. Then we're gonna remove this corner and also notch the other side. So this is gonna be the piece that brings our box together, okay? So knowing that this one is going to be the bottom, so we're gonna cut all of these up to the intersecting score line. Make sure your cuts are nicer than mine. <laughs> okay, so now for the remainder of the box. We're going to be getting rid of these two that are closest to the tab. They are not needed, just not needed. You guys actually saw this box in a bigger version for the bath, bath, bath and body works um, for that uh, the lotion that we did. It's the exact same box, just smaller for the sanitizer. And like I said, this is a great treat box. So we're gonna cut up to the second score, intersecting score line. So we have these little tabs right here. And then these ends, we're gonna cut in half. We're just gonna, because we're gonna be making tabs, closures for the box, right? Then we're gonna notch the corners because we want them to be nicely finished. Then we want them to be beautifully finished on both sides. Okay, and then we're gonna notch the corner on this little piece that's gonna be the tab that folds in. Okay, that's just to help the box go together. We're not gonna mess with any of these because we want these to be the strength of the bottom of the box. All right, so we have all, all of our pieces. Let's put this together. Oh wait, let's cut our, let's cut our panel. 
So the panel is going to be one and a half by two, I'm sorry, one and a quarter by two and a half. I had to think about that for a second. Let me grab a scrap. <laughs> Let's grab a scrap piece. One and a quarter. I have a puppy that's crying out there. Once she wants to come in and join us by two and a half. I think that's what the size was. Hopefully I got the size right. Okay, we're gonna set that aside. Yes, I got it right. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, wonderful. So now for the adhesive, we want to use the Stamp and Seal Plus because we're making a box and we want this to stay together. So we're gonna start with this piece. Let me line it up really well. <laughs> I'm bad about lining it up really well. Don't press down until you got it in place because there's no takesies backsies on this one. Now the two that come together, we're gonna go ahead and just apply adhesive on both sides. And then we gotta figure out where our front is. I always like this folding back, this part to be the front. So this is gonna be the last one to close down. So on this one, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see. I'm just applying a couple of strips on the inside of the opposite side of the side we want on the front. Does that make sense? So we're gonna close that down and we're gonna close this down to form the box. And then finally, I put one last strip on the piece that I want to be the closure. Make sure that I fold it back on itself because I kind of went over a little bit there. And then I'm just gonna close that up and that is gonna create the box. So there we have it. What did I do with my sanitizer? And the sanitizer just slides right in. Ta-da, close it up, there we go. So we're gonna grab our panel piece, we're gonna set that down and we're gonna set this aside and I'm gonna get to the die cutting. Okay, let's get to the die cutting. All right, I'm gonna grab my cut and emboss. I mean, with my pen and my scissors, snips, whatever. You know what I meant. Open this up. So we're gonna need a few pieces. Let me grab my basic black piece. I'm gonna start with that. So in order to die cut the, the um, our, our uh, framelits, we're gonna need to use plate number one, plate number two, the cut side of plate three. Let me grab my piece of black. I just had it. What did I do with it? Oh, there it is. Okay, here's my basic black. Okay. So we're using the seasonal label dies and the black one is gonna be the largest. It's gonna be the largest one. And then, let me just get a scrap of this here. And then I also need the next size down we're gonna need that for another project. And then for this project, I need a piece of granny apple green. Okay, now we can put the top piece of plate three in place. Get that lined up just right. Press down, run through. It's okay if you hear cracking and popping. That's what it's that's what it's supposed to do. I promise. I know it's nerve-wracking hearing it. <laughs> it's a little nerve-wracking. 
Okay, these two pieces are for the next project. So let me grab my dies so we don't lose them. Always make sure you put your dies away. Now, those label dies come in another Christmas theme bundle, but no kidding, the dies are so versatile. I can see me using them all year long. Okay, we will set this aside. That's done. Okay. So this is for a later project. Now, I attached a piece of basic white cardstock to the, an adhesive sheet, and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna stamp the skeleton, and we will fussy cut it out. Let me grab a block. And my memento black. And we're gonna stamp this. Now this is why we keep our scrap paper because you we use every little bit. We use every little bit. I'm just cleaning it with my stamp and chamois, which quite frankly needs to be cleaned. But, and this is my template, you guys. So if you make a template by punching out the, using the punch, you punch this out. Let's put it the right way. You punch this out and then you can line up, put your stamps in, and then when you pick up the stamps, they're exactly where they need to be when you stamp it to punch them right out. So that's what that is. That is my template to get, um, to get a quick stamp and a quick punch. Let me grab the face. I don't know why I just closed that. We needed the face for our skeleton. Now this one, I like to stamp and hold for just a second, just because the eyes are so big. I wanna make sure that I get a good impression. Oh, I love it. I love it when it stamps perfectly. And this one, we're just going to fussy cut, but I also need the sentiment. And with the sentiment, we're just stamping treat from treat yourself. Oh, you know what? From trick or treat. I think I like that one better. So let me grab a piece of tape. And we're going to tape off trick or <laughs> we're going to ink it up. And the beauty of photopolymer stamps is I'm gonna, and then we're gonna remove the tape. I'm gonna be able to see right through to where I'm stamping and we're gonna offset the stamp on the green, Granny Apple Green label. <gasps> Perfection. <sighs> Perfection. Okay. So now we're going to glue this down. Love. We're going to fussy cut. Now, on this, you just stay right outside the black line. This one is the easiest. Honestly, if you didn't want to buy the punches. You could easily cut out every single one of the images. There's no difficult cuts on this one. Um, just remember to turn the project as you cut around. I'm going to pop off the back here because we made it into a sticker when we added it to the adhesive sheet, well, if I can get it, I might need to grab my take your pick tool. I 
my nails leave a lot to be desired. There we go. Pop that right there. Isn't that so cute? Okay, you guys, we have our little sanitizer box. Let's move on to, oh, I missed one of the, hang on, I missed a label. I got to pull out my labels again. So I pre-cut from the Frightful uh, Tags dies, I pre-cut this spider web with the glitter paper, but I need to cut a white circle for another project. And I also need to cut another label from the Christmas um, set, the seasonal labels dies. So I need to cut this label. So I actually had one more cut to make, one more pass through. Let me grab a piece of basic white. Is that gonna be big enough? Ooh, just barely. Just barely. Okay. So how does our sandwich go? Number one, number two, the cut side and number three. We put our paper down. I need a piece of the DSP. Oh, I don't have a, I don't have enough on that one. Hang on. Oh, I just hit the camera. Did I? Hang on a second, you guys. I was not ready. There is a particular color that I want. Oh, there. I'm like, did I use it all? I thought I used it all. Okay. So I'm just going to cut off a piece just to make room. Remember, the blade part goes down. We're going to set this and run it through. Popping, cracking, normal, normal. Don't panic. <laughs> it's totally normal. Ooh, just barely. Do you see how close I got that? Ooh, just barely. I love it. That's, there is so much satisfaction to making a cut that precise. But again, this is why we keep scraps. This is why we do it. Okay. So I've got that. Put these away. Easy peasy. All right. Now we're going to put together the tombstone box. It comes in the package flat. And the really cool thing about it coming in the package flat is you can actually take that same die I just ran through and you can cut out the tombstone front itself, add some acetate and turn it into a, a window box. But what I want to point out, let's go on the light side, is the bottom of the box is slightly smaller than the top. I don't know if you guys can see that. It is ever so slightly smaller. So that's how you can tell the top from the bottom. And the way to put this together is very simply, you're gonna fold in your edges. This is gonna fold over and then fold into itself. But you gotta remove, which they already added. It comes this way, it comes with adhesive. You're gonna remove the resist tape, fold in your edges, Fold up your top, get your corners in tight before you press down. Same thing, fold in, fold up and over, get your corners in tight before you press down. Could not be easier. We'll do it again, remove the resist, fold up the sides, fold in the ends, the top comes up and over. Make sure your corners are in tight before you press down. 
could that be any easier? <laughs> I have got a crybaby dog right now. And then we just put it together. So the cool thing about this box is it actually sits on its own. What a great thing to do for a tape, like if you're having a holiday party, to have somebody's name on this box and fill it with candy and let it be a place setting or a placeholder. So we're just going to start by adhering the label down right to the center. Then we're going to grab some liquid glue. What do I do with the liquid glue? Hold, please. Liquid glue. Where are you? Where are you, liquid glue? Well, all right. I don't know what I did with it. There it is. Found it. Sorry, you guys. Okay. So with the liquid glue, I just like to put a little dab, and then I just ever so gently and lightly just tap it now you can take a dauber and spend a little bit more time placing the glue in all the right spots but i find that this is enough to tack it down and keep it in place after all you're going to be sticking other things on top so it does not have to be perfect Perfect. <laughs> I just said it doesn't have to be perfect. And I say perfect. And then we're just going to stick it down. Okay. Then what we're going to do is I took an aqua painter and I painted, I took my granny apple green. I placed a little bit on one of my acrylic blocks. I took my aqua painter. I did this beforehand so that I could let it dry. So I'm gonna do the opposite side. And I'm gonna squeeze a little bit of water. If it squeezes, oh, there it comes. And I just water, I just brushed to change the color of the designer series paper. You guys seeing that? I just brush to change the color. And there's no rhyme or reason to it. Um, you just do whatever works for you. Make sure you clean the brush because you don't want to taint the water with ink on the inside. And we'll cut from this side. And all I did was cut strips. Now I did the black and white squiggly one for this um, project. I say use whatever you have handy. So this is gonna have an orange side, this is gonna have a black and white side. I can do one that's this one. Again, it does not matter. There is no rhyme or reason to this. You just use whatever here, I've got this one. Oh, I do have one. I do have a, a piece of scrap. So all you're going to do is just take your scraps, cut them into strips. And what I did was I colored one side and then used the other strip for the black and white side. Does that, do you see that? So I could even do that now. And then I separated it with a color. I love it. I love it. Okay, let's do it. So just used a little bit of the um, Stamp and Seal Plus. And remember, if you go over, just fold it back on itself. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Again, fold it back on itself. Okay, so we're going to lay it down. We need the color piece. And finally, let's trim this one so it's smaller. 
And finally, that piece. We're going to stamp our sentiment, treat yourself in black memento ink on a piece of granny apple green scrap. This particular project uses a lot of scraps. And again, because it's photopolymer, you can see right through it easy as can be. Okay, line it up, trim it off. Got our stamp and seal plus. Oh, you know what? I distressed my edges with the blade of my trimmer or my snips. I just went around the edges and distressed just to give it a little bit of wear. That goes there. Then we grab our pumpkin and a dimensional. And there you go. There is, oh, I almost forgot the sequence. Then we grabbed the cute star, the cute star sequence. We grabbed mine. And we'll finish it off with some sequins. I like the take your pick tool for this, but because I'm strapped for time, we're just going to use our snips. You know, I probably should just find my take your pick tool. I'm struggling with... <laughs> I'm struggling with this, so now because I'm because I'm recording. Mm. Yes, we're just gonna pop that on. Okay, done. <laughs> okay, second project done. Now we're gonna move on to our caramel apple. Caramel apple is actually featuring the printed gusseted cellophane bags. Um, this is just a really, really good buy. I actually have the product number and the pricing. You will be wowed when you see the pricing in the PDF. I also, and this is optional, um, for the sample, did not do any coloring because quite frankly, the white trick or treat matches the white that's on the gusseted bag. But for this one, I did color in a couple of the stars with my, um, Stampin' Blend, uh, pumpkin pie, um, alcohol ink marker um, on the outside, not the inside, because the inside is where the food is, right? <laughs> so then we're going to take the circle we cut out. Oh, let me backtrack. We're going to start with this label. So for this label, I carefully folded in half just with my fingers and use my bone folder to crease it. Same thing with this one. I fold it in half, just eyeball it, and then crease it so it looks really nice, like, like I'm on purpose. You do need a stapler for this because that's how we're gonna secure the bag closed. So I'm gonna grab my stapler. Mine is just a tiny attacher. I know Stampin' Up! used to use one. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and staple this closed. We just line this up and it fits over the bag perfectly. I mean, perfectly. Let me staple. You wanna keep, well, see I said I was gonna staple and now my stapler just jammed. What the heck? What the dilio just happened? Okay, that's not working. On to plan B. Let me grab a stapler. No worries. Regular stapler. Put this over the bag. Staple. Staples are going to be totally hidden, so don't even worry about it. We're going to take our Stamp and Seal Plus. Use Stamp and Seal Plus on this one. Just trust me on that and be generous. 
Now I'm gonna go just off center. See how I did that? It's lining up with the center one, this one, and this one, but not on this one. Just go off center. We're gonna go ahead and stamp trick or treat from the cutest Halloween. There it is. And this we wanna do off center as well. Okay, oop, flipped upside down. Oh, there we go, I love it. Whoops. Okay. And then we're gonna take the cat and a dimensional. I'm running out of dimensionals, so I'm gonna use just the edge. This is how we don't waste anything. I'm gonna pop it down. Pop it on the circle. And then we're gonna stick the circle down. Right there. And there you have it, your caramel corn treat bag. Okay, you guys, so that'll do it for another Freebie Friday on Monday. We'll see you again next week.